at noon. A barista notices that she has $20 in her tip jar. If she makes an average of 50 cents from each customer, how much will she have in her tip jar if she serves N more customers during her shift? And we've got to figure out how much she has in her tip jar. So I know you, if you're similar to me, you're looking at this and you're like, well, how, how, how can I figure it out? You didn't give me a number, right? Well, that's the thing. We can't really get a number as an answer, but we can get a mathematical expression that represents the answer. Okay. Now, part of this, whenever you become confused, sometimes, and especially they're giving you like an unknown N or X or whatever the case is, sometimes it's a very useful strategy to just make up a number for N and see if you can have solved the problem. All right. So let's just say that N isn't there and she's going to serve 10 more customers. Okay. Now, Let's gain some vivid detail about what's going on here, okay? The, the more vivid you can become, the more you can create a picture out of this, the more accurate you'll be in getting the right answer. So at noon, right? So 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, barista notices she has $20 in a tip jar. So here's the jar. How much is in it? 20 bucks, okay? And she's going to make now an average of 50 cents from each customer now. Okay, so let's say now tw 10 more customers come in the door. All right, how much in total will those 10 customers give her? You might say, well, if each customer gives her 50 cents and 10 more come in, well, isn't that just five bucks? And that would be correct, right? How did you do it? Well, you basically said something like this, right? You said, well, if each customer gives me 50 cents, so that's 50 cents per customer, and I know the number of customers, meaning there's 10 customers that come in. I know I can have the units cancel here, basically, and I'm left with 10 times 0.5, or half of 10, which is going to be 5. So this would be the amount now that those customers would have given me, right? So now let's say the time reads 4 o'clock, and those, testimer, those customers have come through the door. How much is in the tip jar? We might say, well, I started with 20. And then we added $5 because 10 more customers came in. So I'd have 25, right? $25 would be in the jar and that would be correct. And that would be your answer. That would be your answer if you knew the number of customers, okay? But now we don't know the number of customers. We're, we want to make an expression that has N customers in it. So that's no big deal. Watch. What I do now is I'm going to take this value, right? The 50 cents per customer. And wherever I had my 10 now, I'm going to plug in N for it. Remember, I just made up the 10. It could have been 11. It could have been 12. It could have been 128,976,000. One, something like that, right? Uh, I'm not even sure if I said the number right, but sure. So basically, or if we had N customers there, right? I can plug in N. So notice how the customers would cancel. And now what would be the answer? You can't really multiply them except for just, you know, representing that as a multiplication. So I would write something like 0 0.5 times n. This would be the answer, right? If n were 10, what would this be? It would be 5, exactly what we found over there, okay? Now what I say is, okay, great. Then what did I do? What did I do with this 5 then? Well, I said I had to take that 5 then, and that would have been added to the jar now, right? Plugged it on into the jar, and that would have been added to the 20, so then I would have had 25. So essentially now, the box still has $20 in it, right? This is now 4 o'clock again, but this is just with an unknown number of customers. And I have to add then this thing to it. So that would be 0.5n, right? You see the pattern? I know this isn't satisfactory because it's not a number. We're very number driven. We want an answer, right? But this is an answer given what they told us. So the answer now will be to know how much she has in her jar uh, after N customers come in, it would be the amount she started with, $20, plus then the 50 cents, and I'll write the dollar sign, you don't necessarily have to. The dollar sign, 50 cents multiplied by the number of customers that walk through the door. Okay, this will represent now the number at the end, right? This will represent the number in her tip jar or how much she will have in her tip jar. 
You could also say that this is equal to the, I don't know, amount in the tip jar or something like that if you want. It doesn't really matter. But this would be the expression. So notice how I basically made up a number for n and the problem was easy or easier, let's say, right? And then all you do is once you find out how to figure that out, you then follow along the pattern of how you figured out that problem and now you're just going to plug in n and you're going to do the same things. Okay, problem solving strategy. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Best thing you could do if you wanted to uh, help out would be to just tell your friends. We got a whole bunch of videos out there, uh, probably solving a lot of the questions you might be asking. Check us out. All right, take care.